Hey, welcome back to my channel. I am so glad you're here with me today. Today I want to share with you my very first oil painting experience. Here's the product right there. We're going to do a little bit more of a close-up on it. Um, I did an on-location welcome and for some reason my mic didn't connect and so we missed all of it. Uh, my my feelings and mood at the moment. Um, but I recall saying that I was feeling nervously confident or confidently nervous. Um, and I have been watching uh, some YouTube artists, uh, Ian Roberts, Michael Chamberlain, and uh, Chris Fornatero for many months and getting ready and planning and getting the, the supplies I needed and I finally uh, went out on location and painted and uh, felt like I was prepared and yet I knew I totally had no idea what I was doing. So stick around and watch as we go through this journey of my painting experience and then at the end I'm going to evaluate it and, and would love for you to, to offer some comments as well. So thank you for being here. All right, I'm having to do voiceover because recording didn't work. Here's my paints on the left, ultramarine blue, dioxazine purple, burnt umber, lizard crimson, cad red light, yellow ochre, cad yellow light, and of course, white. Um, there I have Gamsol, and here I have a panel on a watercolor <laughs> easel because my oil um, easel panel bar that I had ordered didn't arrive and I wanted to paint so badly today that I'm just making it work. I set the palette box on the watercolor tray there and hopefully it won't slide off. Here to the right is the scene that I'm painting. It's quite foggy today and a lot of it is lost in there. I'm hoping that it will clear up a little bit. I'm going to pull out some of those trees back in the in the distance just a little bit more but the the point is, is I'm going to come up from the bottom left. I'm going to flatten out that cliff a bit so you can see a little bit more. We are at Fitzgerald Marine Reserve here in Moss Beach and lots of people are out. Now I'm going to speed up the painting and begin to show you how I did it. I'm toning the background um, and I did not bring my paper towels. And so I'm using a watercolor rag that I'll never use for watercolor again. And I am now drawing out the uh, composition. Again, uh, bringing up the leading line from the bottom left to the center right. You'll also come in from the top right down, the focal point being where the waves come into the little beach. Blocking in the darks, and uh, I find that um, I'm using a purple mixture with a uh, realizing it's not dark enough so now I'm adding ultramarine blue uh, and some burnt uh, sienna in there trying to dark it out create some shadows and some of the rocks that will be there on the right and uh, I feel like right now I know exactly what I'm doing based on all the videos I've watched and uh, but you know it's still challenged now I'm trying to put in the foggy misty sky and I was having trouble getting it to to neutralize a bit it still looks a little bluish putting in the trees uh, in there and um, not worried entirely about the color because obviously after the block in I can make adjustments on that but trying to get the right values in here again I'm going to not truly mist out the land in the background uh, or that cliff I'm gonna draw it out a little bit more so the values are gonna be Probably a little more intense than in the reality, um, but I'm, I'm really trying to figure this out as I go along and uh, put in a little yellow ochre heavy area there for the cliff, a little grade in for the beach, small portion of the beach you see, and then here I'm going to start putting in the right side of the rocks and cliffs. They're a little more brown and lighter value in comparison to on the bottom rocks and so 
you know, here I'm just getting color on the canvas. And uh, at this point, uh, Chris Fornatero talks about that ugly stage of the painting and said, don't think that way. Just realize it's part of the process. And so I'm feeling pretty good, actually. I know that this isn't where I'm going to end. And I'm, I'm adding, you know, texture and depth and trying to, you know, render some shapes. Um, now I'm beginning to mist out that darker area of land and, um, re, you know, recede it a little bit. Um, I'm going to do that a few more times because I, I need to soften the value of that and blend it in a bit more. And here, here I'm doing it again. Uh, so I'm just, you know, continually trying to get the right values and um, saturation shade of colors. Obviously, I'm using my own version of colors, trying to stay, you know, somewhat true to what the nature is. Um, but I'm going to bring in um, a lot more purple and blue than we see actually in the scene. And i uh, going to punch a few more of the yellows and some accents in there. Again, it's a very gray day. You don't see much yellow at all. Um, but there is some bright green patches with the ice plant and um, some grass on the top of the cliff there, uh, some sort of foliage that has a, a, a brightness to it because there is sun peeking out a bit behind me every once in a while and it really brightens those colors up. So I'm going to try to do that. Right now the ranger's talking to me, asking me if I'm selling my painting. I said, I don't know. It's my first one. We'll see. I do sell some paintings, but I think this one probably won't rate sell worthy uh in any case i'm really enjoying the interaction and and what's going on here um trying to pull those trees out and yet not pull them out too much is a challenge and in the end in fact you'll really not be able to tell what they are um you know it might just look like a darker section of sky i'm pulling out the palette knife because uh, i want to Put on a few colors at once and create some sharp shapes with highlights and playing with different things. Um, I kind of anticipate that palette knife type of painting is ultimately my goal. I love the impression of that. I love the thick paint. Uh, that's what's different to me with watercolor. I'm trying a different type of scraper palette. Again, this is just my first experience wanting to experiment with different tools I purchased. Watercolor I like because of its transparent, flowy nature, but what I want to create in oil painting uh, someday as I get better at it is this thick um, layering of the paint as well as um, just bold shapes. I, I really don't think I'll ever be the blended sort of person Although my background in the fog is much more blended out and smooth layering uh, because it seemed to me that's what the fog sort of required. But the rocks are very chunky and pull forward a bit and um, I had fun doing that. Not entirely sure that it's all resolved well enough. I mean, it's highly impressionistic and that may be a nice way of saying it's really messy and bad but that's the word i want to give it um, but i'm having fun trying different colors in there and and putting it all down obviously i have this sped up uh this is eight times the speed and uh so i'm moving way faster than um i really did um realizing i want to give some definition to the trees in there trying to push and pull some of the fog into the trees and create some sky holes um, even though you don't really see that too much starting to add in the white highlights of the waves to bring a little punch down there that's kind of the focal point coming up from the bottom left to the the small beach there and so I've got my darkest darks and my lightest lights right next to each other and uh, hoping that that will create a focal of interest, um, the point of interest rather, and realizing that the sides need to be toned down a bit to, to not draw me off the page too much. So I'm darkening those sides up a bit, stepping back every once in a while to see how it looks. And uh, I wish my mic would have worked so you could have heard my uh, on-location musings of how I was 
at some points lost in the weeds as well as hearing those incredible waves but of course sped up the waves wouldn't have sounded too good but I think in general it's it's looking good and I'm feeling really good about it for my first time and uh, and hope that of course I'll get better as I do this more and um, adding more pops of color here in the rock bringing some more ice plant in putting some now chunky shapes in there with the bigger brush uh, I don't know much about the brushes in watercolor. I know the different types of brushes and soft and, you know, more springy and, and, uh, you know, things like that. But on the watercolor, I'm not familiar with them. So I just have three generic brushes. I don't know what type of hair they even are. I think they're a synthetic. I have a number 10 flat, number eight and a number two, I think. And, uh, and I just, I don't have a filbert. I don't have anything like that. So, you know, ultimately I'll get some more tools. I'm not entirely sure how to use them all. And so I'm just trying to lay them in and make it work. And, uh, and it's working. I, I think you definitely can tell the distance. You can see that here. I'm, I'm, uh, misting out the land a bit more, getting it lost into the fog a bit. And, uh, and so, Hopefully it's going to work. Trying to bring a little bit more definition with some of the trunks in those trees. Um, and I think while you're looking at it, you can see just how lost in the mist those trees are back there. Okay, I'm just wrapping it up now and let's take a look at it here in just a moment. Final little details. Okay, here it is. My very first oil painting. Um, I think it looks very moody. It has lots of purples and blue hues, which of course uh, fits this area well. Um, I obviously brought out more detail from the fog in the distance. It's not fully covered, but you get the sense that it is. And of course the foreground, you know that it's rocks, I guess. It just could be considered a big mess. But I think it's got all the different highlights and interest and I don't know, I like it. I may be being kind for myself for my very first one and I'd love some comments and thoughts. I've gotta be careful, I usually get overly critical. So I don't wanna be overly critical, I actually am pleased for my first time. It meets my expectations, might even exceed them. Um, you can hear the question in my voice. In any case, I feel like it's good. Here's, here's the scene still, and the fog kind of comes in and out on the distance as I've been painting. Um, and so, but the bottom rocks down there are very dark with green moss on them, and the upper rocks are more dry and reddish gray with lots of white um, from birds. <laughs> While I've been painting, the tide's been going out, and the Marine Reserve, the tide pools, has completely filled in with people. Uh, I'm sure they're seeing some incredible nature there in the in the tide pools. Uh, some came up and observed. I could feel more people behind me than I probably realized. I think some people took photographs. Very few people talk to me. Usually they do. Um, so, fascinating. In any case, We'll get this back to the house and we will look at it under uh, indoor light and see what pops out. I'll try to do a little bit more of a review on it and uh, we'll see where we go with it. So we have it back here in my studio, my room, and um, we're going to go ahead and do a little bit of a review of it. First thing is, is always trust your spouse. They give you the best feedback. And, uh, and she said, it looks good, but I don't know what I'm supposed to be looking at which means that I don't have a clear enough focal point. And, uh, and to be fair to me, in the lighting I showed it to her, it was not as good of lighting. But nonetheless, she's absolutely correct. Um, while I thought I had a good composition, um, and it probably could, obviously it's oil paint, so I could go and punch it up a bit more. Um, but some of the things don't read as well as me having spent time looking at it out there. Uh, I look at the painting and I see everything just fine because I know what I'm supposed to be seeing. Um, 
when she looked at it and when I come back to the room and try to look at it as a as a first time I see there are some details that you just don't catch so let's go ahead and look at it um, a little more closely all right um, I see the composition as you're being led into here and this is the focal point you could come and your eyes get caught up on some of the green here and you're brought down the cliff again to here all of this is lost in the background there's a clump of cypress up here that I know what that is, but otherwise you may look at it and say it, the sky just has a dark section. And, uh, and I totally could understand that that's how it reads. It was so lost in the fog that I'm, I'm not sure what I would do differently. Um, this frankly was lost in the fog a lot more than I made it. I actually brought it out a little bit more with some purples in here this was at times just completely lost um the rocks are obviously very um nondescript as rocks um it's very impressionistic um it also let's just be honest it's also new person um painter just trying to cope and so i just put some brush strokes on there so it could be criticized as newbie not knowing what they're doing or it could be seen as, ooh, that's cool impressionism. So you tell me in the comments below. I don't mind. I get it. Um, my first painting, I fully expect people to say, eh, you've got a lot of room for improvement. In any case, I really like this area, to me, seems to be the focal. It's the darkest darks and the lightest lights next to each other in this little string here. I think the water here... Um, is very dark and moody and reflects the foggy sky as it comes in and uh, a little bit of beach in here otherwise this is all cliff um, so I kind of like this area these rocks had a lot of moss on them so I've got some highlights of greeny yellow and um, and then it went up into here I will say clearly I feel the need to learn to mix color better um, it seemed to me that oils mix differently than watercolor. Fog for me in watercolor is so easy. Uh, fog in the oil was challenging. Again, everything in the oil is challenging. It's all brand new. Um, it probably is not my best um, choice of subject for my very first time. But the crowds on the roads, the highways were so thick because of tourism today that I just found a spot and resigned myself to make it work. Um, but if you're not challenged, then you can't grow. So I found a spot that challenged me for my first time. And again, I'm, I'm very pleased for my first time, um, but I'm not naive to think that this is a masterpiece. All right, some final thoughts. I am so glad that I started oil painting and I look forward to the journey to see if it improves. Um, I mentioned some artists that I am following and I'll leave their YouTube channel links in the description below. Um, perhaps you will, uh, if you're an oil painter and you've not found them, um, you would enjoy them. Finding the balance between being overly critical and, and overly generous with yourself is a difficult one. I had very low expectations for my first attempt using a brand new medium. And, uh, and yet it exceeded my expectations. I feel I did well for the first time. Again, as I've already stated, is this a masterpiece? Of course not. Um, but I think that um, my first attempt on the new medium, I did really well. And I know what I need to improve in. I need to work on color mixing. I need to work on finding a more suitable um, composition Obviously, composition is key no matter your medium. Um, but I think that going back to the color mixing is one of the biggest things. Um, in watercolor, you could lay shadows over. You could lay washes over to darken things. In oil, I mean, I guess I, guess I know that eventually you could do um, glazing. But in this a la prima style, you really have to mix each shade a value um, with its own color and um, I thought I mean when I mix uh, ultramarine and purples and and um, the burnt sienna 
When I mix Burnt Sienna and Ultramarine in watercolor, it goes very gray. Um, but this stayed way more purple, um, and of course I used dioxazine purple as well. But even though I used the complements, um, things didn't go neutral as much as I expected them to. And so I'm going to have to play around with that, which probably I should have done first. But I'm, I'm the type of guy, ah, forget it, just get out there and try, and you'll learn on the job. And frankly, I will learn on the job, and that's just kind of the way it works. Um, but again, the color mixing is very different. I probably will almost always choose more muted blues and purples in my color palette anyway, so I'm not um, displeased with that. Um, I like that feel. I think the coast in particular um, has a lot of this depth of moodiness um, to it. Uh, we'll see. We'll see as it goes. Other thing I learned is uh, getting the right equipment. Um, I think I had enough to do it well, and uh, but not having my paper towels, uh, not having a pallet box. I just kept it strapped to the pallet there and just carried it back to the car and laid it in there and carried it up into the house. Uh, so it worked, but um, I feel like you really do need the right tools uh, in order to have things um, go the way you want them to. And now I'm just gonna leave this out in the room for a while. I didn't use any mediums that should help it dry faster. I thought that I had um, a Gamblin product that was equivalent to Liquin, and maybe I do, but the description on it, I have, I have a, I have Galkid, which I didn't end up taking and using because it described what it does as thins oil colors, increases transparency and gloss. It, it speeds drying as well, but I didn't want to increase transparency. I wanted to only increase drying. But I guess if you're adding a medium to the pigment, it's going to thin it down. Uh, in any case, maybe it's the Gamblin's equivalent of Winsor Newton's Liquin. I have to do a little more research, but um, Chris Fornatero and Ian Roberts both talk about not using mediums very much, so yeah, we'll make it work. You don't use a medium unless you know exactly what you want out of it, and since I don't know how the medium works, I'm okay. Didn't need it today. So we'll see how it dries. That's going to be, I'm used to immediate drying time with watercolor. Hey, so thank you for joining me on my first attempt. Uh, I would love for you to like and subscribe and leave comments below. While I appreciate the compliments in the comments below, if you are an oil painter and have some constructive criticism, uh, I would appreciate that. I'm not, a, I'm not afraid of some, some comments that, that uh, give me tools to grow and develop. Um, yeah, so there you go. Thank you for joining me on our channel. And, uh, and I'll look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye-bye.